Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and this um, is the second video in a series where I'm talking about the Arctic sea ice. And the extent of the Arctic sea ice, defined as regions with at least 15% ice, they can be 85% water, 15% ice, and they'll be included in the extent numbers, were very surprising come, you know, about the first, second week of August when the, um, up until then they were going, it was, you know, 2019 sea ice extent was neck and neck with the, with the previous record of 2012, which set a minimum of extent. And then the, um, this year it just slowed right down. The, the loss of sea ice extent just stalled and uh, really, really flattened out and uh, you know now you know now it's nowhere near 2012. So the big question is, you know, what happened? What was different this year? And uh, you know, so I'm delving into the details of that, and I'll just continue where I left off in the previous video. So, um, of course, if you to get the information on um, Arctic sea ice, just Google Arctic sea ice graphs, and you can get uh, you know really um, almost near near almost real time data. Um, you know, so this is the National Snow and Ice uh, Data Center plot that I was talking about, you know, the slowing down and uh, the flattening out of this curve, which really surprised everybody because it was tracking below, slightly above. It was tracking quite um, closely to the 2012 record line and then suddenly, boom, it just flattened out and tapered off. So, so why, why did that happen? Um, and one of the things is that you can look at is, uh, you know, maybe it's just the dynamics of the way the ice is moving. And if, so if you look at the, um, the, the ice volume, what you can see here is the ice volume was also tracking very closely to the 2012 line. And I'll have a look at that in more detail. Um, I just want to remind you that when we talk about regions of the Arctic, this is the best map. So if you just click on that map, um, you can get a good idea of all of the different places. Um, you know, so I'm talking about the Beaufort Sea, it's this region, you know, Laptev Sea, Kara Sea, East Siberian Sea. Okay, the Greenland Sea is in here. Okay, Canadian Archipelago Islands and so on. Okay, so, so always refer back to this map if you don't know the region of the Arctic that I'm talking about. And, you know, after you um, study, you know, the Arctic for a while, you get to know where most of the, the things are. Um, this is the uh, PO mass, the Arctic sea ice volume analysis site. Um, but I've got some more recent curves than, 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 than this one. This one ends kind of mid-August here. Okay, um, but I'll, there, there are some more recent curves uh, tweeted out. So I'll talk about those in, in a few minutes. But what I want to do is um, look at this animation here. So um, this is an animation that was posted by Zach Labe, who has a, who posts all kinds of great animations and data. So this is the ongoing loss of multi-year old sea ice. Okay, and this is a very striking component of the Arctic system. We're getting loss of the thicker ice, and we just have younger sea ice, which is thinner and weaker, it's more vulnerable, more vulnerable to melt. Okay, so I'm gonna just, um, I'm gonna expand this guy here and let's start at the beginning. So what this is, is this is the sea ice age. So first year ice, the ice is one to two years. It's, it's lasted through the summer melt season and then it regrows the next winter. This has lasted through two melt seasons in the summer, three melt seasons and so on. So this is the ice age. So you can track it by, track the pixels. You know, if you know it's uh, multi-year ice, you can track this pixel over time. Um, and this is the, the uh, sea ice over, over four years old, um, basically. And it's the area of the ice in millions of square kilometers. Okay, so January 1984, and we'll just cycle through this. Okay, so what you can see is you can see, you know, the ice decreasing in the summer, increasing in the winter. 
Okay, there's a lot of export here out through the Fram Strait. Occasionally there's some export through the Nares Strait. Okay, um, there's rivers bringing warmer water in and that cuts into the ice in some regions. You can see how much export there is of some of the, the, the so a lot of the multi-year ice has just gone right up, right out of the, out of the uh, Fram Strait. So what you can see is as we, as we uh, cycle through the years, you can see, um, you know, less and less of the, of the multi-year ice. Okay, so this, this is going lower and lower and lower. Okay, up to 2000. Okay, so I'm just going to play this, keep playing this. And I recommend that you, you know, look at this yourself in detail and, and try to notice what's happening with the multi-year ice, with the thinner ice. Okay, boom. Okay, we had a very low year, 2007. September 2007 set a minimum. And now look, we're, there's less and less and less of the older ice. The older ice is basically vanishing. We're changing from a regime of thicker old ice to very, very thin um, first year ice, younger, much younger ice. 2012 was the minimum record. Okay, and then we go up. Twenty eighteen, right? There's very, very little, very, very little thick ice. Now this is July of twenty nineteen. So the only ice that's that's uh, multi-year ice is 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 a ridge here of uh, four plus four years plus ice. You know this ice is two to three years. You know there's ice here that's uh, first year ice, and there's some second year ice here in these regions. Okay, so we'll just look at the, uh, we'll go back to uh, September, 20, uh, September 2012, uh, September 2012, okay, uh, August 2012, July, August, September 2012, so you can see very little multi-year ice, very little sea ice over four years old, okay, uh, less than, say, 0.25 or 0.3 million square kilometers, and the ice has retreated way back into, into this region. And we can go back to see the previous um, minimum, record minimum of, you know, in uh, 2007, September 2007. Okay, and this was a previous record minimum, and there's still a fair bit of the thicker multi-year ice there. Okay, so this is, a, this is a crucial curve, and it's clear, you know, we're losing all the multi-year ice in, in the Arctic. Multi-year ice is harder. It's, um, the salt brine pockets have, have all been pulled out by gravity, so it's basically um, got much less salt content. It's almost, you know, when you melt it, it's almost pure water, no salt, and therefore it's much tougher, it's much harder to melt. And that stuff's all going, and we're just get having, we're going to a regime where it's just, you know, very, very thin, uh, first year ice, bit of second year ice, uh, and that, and, and also we're losing the ice all around the fringes. Um, so I think that when we hit the blue ocean event, there'll be no ice around the fringes because it's at 70 degrees north latitude. The only the, the, the only ice left, I think, will be in a small pocket circling the, the North Pole. Um, and this is not, you know, this is not um, the, um, the, the way people are thinking, the way most scientists are thinking these days. But I think, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, there's a lot more that we need to understand about what's going on. Okay, so here is a tweet where that shows a plot of the decline of the oldest Arctic sea ice. And... This is uh, the thick old sea ice used to cover most of the central Arctic Ocean. Today, more than 95% of that old sea ice is gone. So you can see the decline here, you know, three, 
um, million square kilometers of ice back in the 80s, late 80s, and then down to, you know, close to zero. Okay, that's, it's vanishing, 95% is gone. So when does your data suggest an ice-free Arctic? And Zach recommends this article, how predictable is the first ice-free Arctic summer? Okay, so let's have a look at that article from 2016. Okay, um, and yeah, I mean, around, uh, you know, this time of year, so the, you know, September, many people turn their attention to the Arctic in anticipation of the annual minimum for sea ice cover. There's loads of posts on the forums. People have bets as to what the minimum level will be. People have bets as to when we'll have the first, uh, you know, blue ocean event, I call it. Some people call it different things. By the way, that's my term. I first came up with that name and it seems to have caught on in many circles. Um, you know, so when, when will that year be? Um, of course, uh, so this is the September's uh, since 1979. The Arctic sea ice cover has declined 13.4% per decade. <clears throat> okay. And the record low was September 2012 when it, ice went down to 3.41 million square kilometers. So this is the plot. Um, this is the extent September 1999 to 2015, and you can see the 2012 minimum and the 2007 minimum there. Okay, with a decline of 13.4% per decade. Now, as long as, as 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 quick as that decline is, the decline in snow cover in the spring on the land fringing the Arctic is even faster. It's about 22-23% per decade decline. Um, so such a stark drop off in sea ice has prompted the question when the Arctic will first see an ice free summer. So in this new study, of course, this is a 2016 article, so I'll show you the study in a minute. Um, they looked at whether you could pin down a specific year and they argued that, well, first of all, ice free Arctic summer is sea extent less than 1 million square kilometers. And they think, they say that because Arctic sea ice isn't just found in the central Arctic Ocean, it's on the northern coastlines of the US, Greenland, Russia, and Canada, and the narrow channels of the Canadian Arctic archipelago. And it's thicker in these regions in the central Arctic. So scientists expect that sea ice will be present there a little longer than it will be, than it will out in the central Arctic Ocean. Right, so as sea ice declines, it, people, you know, people think, and this is still a prevalent view from scientists, is they think they'll reach a point where the central Arctic Ocean is largely ice-free, but there'll be remnants of ice along the northern coastlines of Canada, Alaska, and Greenland. So that's why they chose the one million square kilometer threshold to represent a practically ice-free Arctic Ocean. But I think because these coastlines are much lower latitude, then that the ice will be will, will go there before the ice um, orbiting the uh, North Pole. I think that that may happen. I think it's a, there's a very good chance. That that's that's my present view right now. Okay, so and this is symbolic pretty much the one million square kilometers. You know, it's like uh, you know the temperature of one degree C above pre-industrial or CO two going above four hundred. Right, it's a troubling milestone of human-caused uh, climate change, but basically the models showed that um, the simulations from climate models come up with a wide range of answers on when the Arctic becomes ice-free. Projections range from 2005, which didn't happen obviously, to after 2100. Most models say about 2050 or so. Some models, uh, if you take, take a subset of models that seem to better predict observation, correct for biases, uh, then, then you can get, try to pin down that date. But there's, very, there's three principal sources of uncertainty and predictions. Okay, natural variability in the climate system, how quickly we reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and the model skill. Okay, and... Uh, and uh, there, there, the natural variability is, is very important and it makes predictions of a particular year extremely tricky. So um, please tune into my next video to find out, uh, you know, what's happening. Thanks.